Three as BYU leads by a score of uh, 74 to 55. And Carson trying to uh, get it chop into this lead as there's McCoy with his coach Randy Ray. So Carson completes the three point play. But both teams still shooting lights out for the game. BYU shooting 61% from the floor, and Weber State shooting 57. Wildcats, though, turning the ball over. Well, and Randy Ray going to the zone defense. And BYU can afford to be very patient with the ball now. Use some clock on each possession. Not sure that that's in their makeup, however, because they love to come down and shoot the clock well. He shot that with uh, that ball with nine seconds on the shot clock, so did a nice job of taking some time off it. It'll be interesting to see how patient they can be. But the thing is, you have to get defensive stops if you're Weber State, and you have to take care of the ball when you get it back. Well, Jonathan Tavernari nails his first three of the night. He was 0 for 6 before that shot. And BYU is a plus 12 in field goals attempted. The reason for that, because in terms of turnovers, it's 15, 14 turnovers for the uh, 12 turnovers for the Wildcats and five for BYU. So again, you want to take care of the basketball, otherwise it's going to be a long night. That shot was blocked by Davis. Here comes McCoy. And the break is shut off by Lamont Morgan. A little turn and shot by Trevor Morris that's off the mark. And I think I made up a word, by the way, uh, in the last, uh, when I was talking about extenuation, okay? Extension would do, but extenuation, I'm not sure. But I, uh, next time I play Scrabble, I'm gonna try and get away with it. It works for me, Steve. <laughs> Whistle. Ball on the perimeter. I think got, got uh, Gavin McGregor. Yeah, a little push down low. The big body using it. So that ball turned over by BYU as Tavernari comes out and Kamar checking in to BYU's lineup. Let's see what the Wildcats can do with their possession as Bollinger is at the table for the next dead ball. He'll be back in to Randy Ray's lineup. Marcus Carson, young man out of Oakland, California. There's McCoy out of Norman, Oklahoma, all five foot six of him. Down low, Trevor Morris, Nampa, Idaho. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Wildcats are the ones showing patience. They're the ones that need the offense. McCoy squeezes off a three, so you, you take that 35 second clock down to about six seconds and you wind up shooting a three with somebody in your face. It's not the kind of offense that you're looking for if you're Coach Randy Ray. You want to get something a little better out of the set than that. Well, nice defensive possession by BYU. That time Lamont Morgan came down on the other end and maybe put up a shot that Dave Rose would have preferred to to milk the clock a bit more, a few more passes. Carson and Mahoney are out for Weber State. We told you Bollinger came back in, and so did Nick Hansen for the Wildcats. BYU still doing a nice job of getting in the passing lanes, making it uncomfortable for Weber. I'd kind of like to see the one-on-one -on, -one on the under six-foot league between Morgan and McCoy out there. That's a pretty good battle. Two guys about 5'5", five, 5'7". Five, five, Davis with a possession and penetration. He's fouled. Foul called on number 53. It's going to go against Gavin McGregor, so he picks up a couple of quick ones. He's got three overall, and it's the sixth team foul on BYU. Davis triggering into McCoy. A new 35-second clock for Weaver. Bollinger got his man in the air. That was Kamard, but can't get the shot. Now the, from the corner is Davis, and it's off the rim of the rebound to Morgan. Ahead to Emery. Emery works against Davis and is bumped, and Davis called with the body on him for the foul. John Lee is the man who spotted the foul, and with 7.55 left in this basketball game, will step aside. 77.56 is our total. I can remember my dad was a, a basketball coach ever since I was little, ever since I can remember. And so I always remember following him to uh, his practices when I was a little kid and I would just play around with the ball in the gym while he was running his practices and I guess that kind of got me interested. It was tough at times, you know. 
Um, you go through all that practice and then you don't get to play in the games. So that was tough at times, but you know, I learned my role and I just learned that the, the way I could contribute was to help my teammates get better. The guys that were playing every game, I could just push them. It was probably my dad. He was always pushing me and then in my, my first middle school coach in like seventh grade, she just really taught us like hard work, you know. It went from being just like city league basketball to like more discipline and defense and she was a big influence. The adrenaline, the emotion, it's just it's just awesome. It's really hard to describe, but it's something that you can't uh, you can't replace, you know, it's just a great atmosphere to play basketball in. It's more of a transition game, it's more up tempo. I'm used to in high school I played more of a uh, like old school some people call it. I really hope to contribute a lot, either at the four or five position, you know. Um, I hope to keep improving this offseason too. Back here in Ogden and looking for answers is Coach Randy Ray of the Weber State Wildcats. And right now is how to stop BYU. They've got 77 points and you've got to climb back into this thing. 7.55 remaining and uh, well, you, maybe maybe the look said it all right there, the hand to the brow, because it has been one of those second halves. The first half, as has been the case for Weber State much of the season so far, was a, a very competitive half. But right before the half, BYU started to pull away, and they've extended that lead now to 77-56. Kamard with a little dish, and Morgan's three off the, re, off the uh, mark. The rebound comes off to Bollinger. Well, it's really the steals in the second half that it made the difference for BYU. Oh, wow, <laughs> that's, uh, that's a major league move. I don't care where you are. Davian Davis with that reach back throw down. Six foot four, playing about 6'10". You know, he's got big time leaping ability. Davian Davis. Or maybe he can get this crowd back in. Or look at him, sky for two off the, uh, the dunk. And now it's going the other way. As Kamar's pass goes errant and immediately Dave Rose calls for a timeout and Tavernari will check in. But it's going to be a 30 second timeout. He took one look at that, saw the breakdown on the defensive end with Davis getting the dunk. And we're going to look at that one more time, then saw his team throw it away and said, I've seen enough, let's regroup here for a minute. Yeah, Davis just caught it on the left side, saw the open lane, took off from outside the lane. Nobody took away the baseline, and so he uh, promptly used the alley and said, come on, let's get into this, talking to this crowd. Well, good timeout by Dave Rose. Wanted to stop that as, as quickly as it happened. And Randy Ray hoping to build on it. Still time for his basketball team if they can put something together, create some turnovers, get some stops. But it's an uphill battle. Don't want to make any light of it with 731 remaining against a very good BYU team that came into this game a perfect 6-0. Saturday, they'll go against Utah State, another unbeaten team. It will be at Energy Solutions Arena, the home floor of the Utah Jazz, and we'll have it right here on KJazz at 5 p.m. Bollinger's three off the mark. Out of bounds. Ball goes over to BYU. Yeah, Bollinger had 16 in the first half. Still at 16. Hasn't yep. scored in the second half. Absolutely held in check here in the second half. It'll be what you can afford to use that clock here. And Kamar just muscles in. Well, they didn't use much of it. 21 seconds remained on it when the whistle was called for the foul, and that foul is going to go against Davian Davis. Lee Kamar. So many weapons. 23 points on the night, 10 for 11 field goals. Three rebounds, two assists. Usually has a couple of steals and blocks in there as well. And Davian Davis, by the way, picked up his fourth personal foul. So one of the uh, real offensive weapons and athletic players on that Weber State team now nursing four fouls. 20-point margin as Hansen comes off the screen on that little curl. Now picked up the dribble. We know he were to go with it, and Davis will pull it back out. Still on the perimeter. Bollinger will go to the basket, double clutches, guarding the rim and not giving any ground was McGregor. So he got past the first man did Bollinger only to run into McGregor right under the rim. Jackson Emery has trouble with the handle. 
And he'll pull it back out and reset the offense with 20 on the shot clock. Yeah, Dave Rice, BYU assistant, calling the play. Trying to get the ball down to Kamard on the block. And he turns and fires over McCoy. Well, there's a mismatch. You get Kamard in the paint with a five foot six McCoy, and that's just an automatic two. Lee Kamard's total is now 26 points. Just moved inside, six minutes remaining in the basketball game. 80 to 58, BYU. As Steve Panel sets to check in, Jackson Emery stealing the pass. Fredette at the elbow, wide open, squeezes off a three. And the rebound comes off to Davis, and now the Wildcats will push the pace. Davis driving through traffic before he can get the shot away. He's fouled. Davis a little frustrated uh, with the foul. I'm sure the score has something to do with that frustration. Yeah, wanted the opportunity to go to the basket. And Panos is back into that Wildcat lineup. Rose will check in now for BYU as well. Let's see who he replaces. It looks like Tavernari is going out. Yeah, Archie Rose getting his first minutes of this season. Had a foot injury. It's prevented him from playing up until tonight. Father was a teammate of, of with Dave Rose. A pair of roses. It's usually a rose between two thorns, but uh, you got a pair of roses there. 80 to 59. Weber State trying to chip into this lead. It is going to be an uphill battle. There's Archie out of Nassau, the Bahamas. The Bahamas. What a nice place too, especially about this time of year. As long as you keep the hurricanes out of there, you're all right. But Nassau, one of the boy, great beaches of the world off the Bahamas. Missing the free throw. Can't afford to give those away if you're Weber State. Need every point you can get. Let him go. So BYU will probably get its first real test of the season this Saturday. Game against Utah State at Energy Solutions Arena. Kamard with a friendly bounce. And of course, we'll have that game for you. Andy, you'll be back alongside. And uh, should be a good one. Probably both teams, uh, well, both teams will come in unbeaten. Yeah, and Stu Moore, what a great job he does with that Utah State team. It's going to be a different situation for them, uh, as I mentioned earlier, having a home game ostensibly, but played on a neutral court because the Spectrum, one of the great home floors in the country, never mind just in the West, as that ball rattles out for Bollinger. Well, and I don't know how you can really call it a home game for Utah State. It's, it's basically a neutral court. I think there'll be good number of BYU fans there as well should be a great matchup well we look forward to it this one uh, obviously a one-sided affair you look at the field goals look at the BYU attempts there are a plus 12 in attempts and a large number of a large part of that number is because of the turnovers because from a rebound standpoint you, uh, excuse me, Weber State has the advantage. Now, Emery, I think, has got a little blood on him after that last uh, that last exchange. Took a shot to the lip. The officials saw it bleeding. They're going to get that cleaned up, and they'll take the necessary time in which to do it. So it's an official's time, and it will now go to a full timeout with four minutes and 13 seconds left in this basketball game. If you're Dave Rose, what did you see in your team tonight that you like? Well, it's been more of the same. You know, BYU has, has been very strong in these first seven games. You know, granted, the competition hasn't been what they're going to see later on in the season with Mountain West Conference opponents. Uh, average margin of victory, 22 points in these first six games. It looks like we're going to be right there in this game as well. Uh, BYU, I, I, the thing that's so impressive to me is how well they move the ball. They move the ball from side to side, up the floor. They're very unselfish. And as far as Weber State is concerned, I guess the, the challenge is to get, his, get to get the team to play the same way they did in the first 16 or 17 minutes. It was one of the keys to play a full 40 minutes. And, and Randy Ray, I'm sure, is beside himself because he knew that that was a problem at Utah State. Thought maybe one of the reasons could have been a fatigue factor, but tonight, you know, they played the uh, Montana Tech game over the weekend. You, you've had plenty of time, I would think, to get the legs back under you again, especially this far into the basketball season. Again, take nothing away from BYU because they're partially responsible, obviously, for some of the reason that this second half hasn't gone that well for Weber. But the pattern is something you can't ignore. Well, Randy Ray's got a lot of young players. He's going to have to live with some of this to see the development of his team. But it's hard to live through sometimes. 
Emery's got whatever problem he had fixed, and now there's contact underneath. Yeah, Lee Kamard set the cross screen underneath the basket. Panos. And paid for it. <laughs> Pushed him down. He'll go to the line. Number three on Steve Panos as Lee Kamard kind of shakes the cobwebs out for just a minute. That's a big body landed on you. Panos has got some size to him. Well, Lee Kamard, not a a big strong guy I'll tell you what I saw him four or five years ago in high school Mesa High down in Arizona and he looks like the strongest man in the world right now <laughs> compared to what he did as a senior in high school he's got that Andre Kirilenko look a little bit just get kind of wiry but he hits the free throws and he now has the points to match his number and number 30 will go to the bench to take a rest and maybe done for the night with 407 left and a 27 point lead for his basketball team once again, a solid, solid night from Lee Kamard. Inside four minutes, Panos. Whistle, could have had an and one. The foul called underneath. Gavin McGregor picking up the personal foul as we take a timeout. Lee Kamard with a well-deserved drink on that Cougar bench. His team leads 86-59. I actually came here to BYU before I started playing basketball. It was just kind of a, a dream of mine, I guess you can say, a goal of mine. You know, the academic side of things is also a big plus why I came here, um, especially for the business school being so highly ranked as it is. It's beautiful. I mean, it's a great campus. Um, you know, it's always well kept up and, um, you know, it's always looking really, really nice and stuff. Me personally, I kind of like to just hang out with my friends and stuff, spend time with, uh, with them and uh, my family. I have some family up here as well. The uh, Professor Glenn Christensen, uh, the marketing guys, uh, he just has this passion for, for marketing and what he does that, uh, you know, that really, really impressed me. So I guess might as well go with his class. It was a really good class as well. It's an excellent school. Uh, there's lots and lots of people that are interested in your success. I think that's a big point that, uh, you know, that you don't just get tossed into some school like this and get, you know, expected just to do everything on your own and stuff. But there's a lot of people that are there to help you out if you take advantage of them. Well, dejected faces there on that Weber State bench as they trail 86 to 59. But number 31 is part of tonight's electrifying play of the game brought to us by the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. Damian Davis flashing from the elbow and throwing it down along the baseline. And that is tonight's electrifying play of the game. Tried to get the crowd into it, but BYU has taken them out of it. Panos is at the free throw line, but I'm looking at some numbers, Andy Toulson. 13 to 5 in terms of turnovers. BYU with 20 points off the turnovers to just four for Weber State. And the Cougars out rebounding the Wildcats now. 29 to 19, 23 17 on the defensive board. So. Uh, again, just, uh, you know, doing the things that we talked about they needed to do in terms of the keys to this game. Well, we talked about it in the open, Steve. BYU just doing what they've done all season long up to this point. Causing turnovers, forcing turnovers, getting easy buckets on the other end. Abuo is into the game now for... Coach Dave Rose, there's the little jump by McGregor that is off the mark and a rebound fought for and a jump ball between Bollinger and Archie Rose. And it will be BYU basketball on the possession arrow. 3.33 left here in Ogden tonight. A reminder to join us again on Saturday when BYU takes on Utah State from Energy Solutions Arena in Salt Lake. Abuo inside, little reverse layup, and he has a pair. Boy, the thing is so impressive is just how deep this BYU team is. I mean, Dave Rose can basically play 10, 11 players without much difference. He's gone 10 deep tonight. And he's about to go 11 deep at the next horn because Matthew Pinnegar will come in. Whistle underneath, panels fouled as he goes to the basket. Hansen will come in for Weaver State. 
And Pinniger and Morgan will check in for BYU. There's a look at McGregor. Not happy with the call. Nobody's ever happy with the call <laughs> in terms of a foul, right? The, on very rare occasions. There's Dave Rose talking to the official, and it looks like Pinnegar is going to come out. Uh, I think he's got five, and Anderson will replace him for BYU. <laughs> yep, number 53 is done for the night. Gavin McGregor, the senior center. Jim, Jim Fredette, nice night. 18 points, seven assists. Got a steal. That's one whose points kind of snuck up on you. Jimmer Fredette with 18. That's Panos. Hits up the free throw line. Panos now has 10. Averaging almost 12 a game along with seven rebounds is Steve Panos. Yeah, Jimmer Fredette. Great score in high school. Upstate New York. That's Anderson down on the low block. Turn around shot that panels rebounds. Curls that in his forearm and with under three minutes remaining. Wildcats just trying to minimize the damage. Panels outside shot is rebounded by Rose. Pinniger chasing down that pass from Morgan and back out to his point guard. And this will foul on the perimeter. That's going to be on number three, Kyle Bullinger. Second personal foul for Bullinger. That is the ninth team foul on Weaver State. They'll shoot the one and one. Just the one away from the double bonus here. Well, it was a pretty competitive game through the first 17 minutes. And then BYU put on a little surge to end the first half and came out the second half and just extended it. Off the miss, BYU with a rebound. Anderson, a long frame again. This time uses the glass and does it effectively. Two points for a total of four for Anderson. Well, Dave Rose has to be really happy about the uh, contributions that every player on his team has given him. Well, wraparound pass as Morgan expended, expected Abuo to continue to run it through, and Abuo broke it off. Now coming into the Weber State lineup, T.J. Benson, the junior out of Tempe, Arizona. And going to the bench, he is Hanson. So we're going to deep into the bench of both basketball teams. Marco Ramos out of Salinas, California, will come in. That's Lillard. And trying to find Bollinger, and it goes out of play. Turnover by the Wildcats again. 20 to 4, the points off turnovers in favor of BYU. And it's a 30 point lead at 90 to 60. So the Cougars winning this one by a larger margin than their average on the season. Not too many people would have picked that for tonight. Even if they picked a BYU win, a 30 point blowout is a rarity anytime you come into Ogden. Well, I'm going to, I'm very interested to see how this uh, game Saturday will play out. And Utah State does not get blown out. Very Anderson. Often. Anderson again, now he's got six. Well, he establishes the deep position. And Anderson's shown he can hit that little turnaround jump hook. You better overplay that side. See if he can come back the other way. Benson. Ramos with the shot. And the high archer goes over the standard and out of play. 112 left in this basketball game. 92 to 60. BYU going to go to 7 0. Josh Cottle out of Heber City. Coming in now, replacing number one, Damian Lillard. Lillard will be done for the night as well. BYU was sitting on that ball. Pinniger. Abuo pulling it back out. They go to Rose on that block posting up. And Rose trying to use the body. It's a little short off the front of the rim. And here come the Wildcats. Coddle over in the corner. Fakes the shot looking for Panos. And Panos can't get away from Anderson. Benson with the kick. I think it was intended for Panos. He got it anyway. It was Coddle over there. but. Significant height difference between the two, and now a whistle and a foul. And the foul is going to be called on BYU. Let's see, is that number 15? I believe it's going to go to uh, Anderson. 
at line speed panels for the Wildcats. And panels will go to the free throw line again. Darren Mahoney will check in at the next opportunity for Weaver. And this one settles and drops. And Mahoney's coming in for the shooter panels. As you look at Lee Kamard, saying, you know, that forearm could use that forearm just a little bit more. I could probably get a few more shots there. The panels now with the free throw, and Mahoney replaces him. With 38.5 seconds remaining in this one, and a 30 point advantage for BYU. Turned into a blowout here in the second half. Rose into traffic, has it taken away, and well, Mahoney can't find a handle on it, and so BYU will get the basketball back. 28 on the game clock, 25 on the shot clock. Yeah, really an impressive start to the season by BYU. Morgan off the rim with a three-pointer. Ball goes out of bounds, out of play, and it's off Weber State. They'll go to 7-0, and all, will the Cougars? And now Morgan will trigger it. No need for a shot. 17-16 and counting. BYU with this in hand. And he'll just dribble out the clock. Eight seconds and counting. Pinnegar with the basketball. 2-1, and that's going to do it here for Morgan. The horn sounds. It's a 30-point win for the BYU Cougars. 92-62 is the final score. And again, Randy Ray's team undone by their second half. First half was a solid half of basketball by both teams. But BYU showing the uh, superior strength and size and down the stretch. If you want to include the second 20 minutes as the entire stretch, BYU just able to put it away. See. So a 30-point win, and we will come back and post-game analysis of this one right after the break. Programming on BYU television is made possible by contributing viewers and by... Everything a missionary needs at missionaryclothingcompany.com. The following is a fiscally fit insight from Living Essentials and BYU Television. Now, Scott, you say that financial planning is really an investment in the future. Tell, tell us about that. Unfortunately, a lot of times when people look at budgeting, they look at it in a fairly difficult or frustrating way, and they, 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 rec they don't recognize what it can mean to the future. Uh, you've really got a choice. Once you've disciplined yourself and kind of found the inner strength that's necessary to actually save a dollar, you've got a choice of whether to spend that dollar on something else or to actually save that dollar or to invest it in our future. If I've chosen to invest it, probably the best place that I can invest it if possible is inside of a pension or profit sharing plan where I work because there are some extra benefits that are derived once I've done that. I not only get the benefit of the dollar that I've saved, I also get the benefit of the taxes that I would have spent on that dollar. I also add to my investment any matching contribution that an employer might add to it. I also, because I've elected that dollar to be saved as a percentage of my income, as my income goes up each year, then the amount that I'm contributing actually goes up each year. This BYU Television and Living Essentials Fiscally Fit Insight is sponsored by Beneficial Financial Group. Beneficial Financial Group, making life beneficial. This season, it is the simple things we can be thankful for. The comfort of a smile, the exuberance of song, and the feeling of being together at Thanksgiving. Join Brigham Young University for a Thanksgiving special of American Folk Hymns. Thursday at 5 on BYU Television. Screen student work and then discuss it with the filmmakers. Telling 
telling stories through the moving image is more than just pointing a camera. The BYU Film Program emphasizes solid thinking and conceptualizing, understanding cinematic tradition and theory, and speaking and writing critically. It's about engaging ideas and challenging.